Oda finally reveals Law's backstory. We have all been asking for this for a very long time, weeks after weeks after weeks, weeks of breaks, hiatuses. We have been waiting for this flashback for a long time. And yes, it delivered. It fucking delivered. Oh my god. <sighs> Law is my, one of my favorite characters currently from the New World, honestly. Ever since the time skip and all that, Law has quickly become one of my favorite characters. And with this chapter, it reveals Law's tragic past and what he had to go through. And it reveals why he is like he is, his personality and different things like that. The biggest thing about this chapter that was a completely sh big fucking shocker I did not expect from this flashback at all when it comes to Law's flashback is that Law had a sister, Lamy. Now, hopefully I said the name right, but either way, Law's sister is revealed this chapter that died by war. Now, here is the thing. With this chapter, it shows us where Law was born, where he was at, where he grew up, and what he had to go through. For instance, the main concept of the chapter is laid out to show us that there's this town called the White City that had this, like, mineral, this mineral called Amber Lead. It was underneath the ground of the White City, and you had all the locals and all the nobles there by. They would mine and dig. They would grab this Amber Lead, and they would sell it off to different countries. They'd make weapons, tableware. They used all sorts of shit with this Amber Lead to make all sorts of stuff, and they made a lot of profit and money off of it. Now, as we all know, in today's society, lead is poisonous. That's why lead no longer can be used in tableware or in houses or whatever. They actually banned that in real life. That stuff was banned. But like a hundred years ago in our time, really in real life, lead was able to use. You could use lead for anything. And so it's interesting how Oda added the concept of amber lead into the series that actually has some form of real life correlation. It really does. And to see how these kids, for instance, you know, how the generations of the White City and all that, they kept, you know, mining this stuff and they were oblivious to this amber light and what it was causing and what it was doing, they found out too late, when it was too late to reverse all the effects and it was just pretty much, it was over. The entire city pretty much imploded on itself. It destroyed itself because every time you would ingest this, like, letter, every time it entered your body, it would weaken your lifespan and it would spread on to the next child, the next generation. And as generations passed, it shortened the lifespan of each generation by a fuck ton. For instance, up to Law's generation, the longest you'd live is till when you were 10 years old, and that's why Walt said technically a chapter or two back why he would die very soon. So it shows you that Law has this disease. He has the amber lead. Now, the thing is with this, okay, is that pretty much the entirety of the White City was infected by Amber Lead because, like I said, they discovered it way too late. All the symptoms popped up at once, and it looked like a contagious disease at the time when it popped up, and which in turn led other countries to close their borders and to not let any people from the White City to escape from their country because they thought it was contagious, a contagious disease that was killing people, which in turn it wasn't. It was because of the lead from generation after generation. And it's sad how that was done. And what makes this, you know, chapter very tragic in Law's backstory tragic is that the world government could have easily have fixed this problem. They could have easily cleared up the problem saying that the, you know, disease, you know, the amber lead that's currently affecting all the citizens of White City technically isn't contagious. They could have easily have said that and they knew it wasn't contagious, but they didn't say it. They didn't try to stop nothing. They just let the town get killed, destroyed by war. Everybody got killed off. You had, you know, women and children, fathers and mothers. Everybody was getting killed in this town and Law has to see his parents die in front of his eyes. Eyes, and he has to watch his sister burn inside this burning building by herself as he's outside the building. And he escapes the country through a mountain of corpses. That's really fucked up. That's a really, really fucked up backstory for the law. I I'm just going to say right now, this is pretty damn dark. This is a really dark backstory. And it got me really intrigued about what is going to continue going on. Because with this chapter... The flashback is still technically not done yet. The flashback is not done with Law. Law stabs Cross on at the end of this chapter. Stabs him right in the back. You see the sword blade go right through him. And you see him bleed and all that. And we know for a fact Law doesn't kill Korra. We know for a fact he doesn't at all. He doesn't, he doesn't kill him because we know Doffy killed him. So, overall, the chapter was pretty fucking crazy. Just, I never expected Law to have a sister and to die like that. Now, necessarily, I don't know if Law's sister is dead. Because, I mean, this is... 
a shonen technically i mean most likely she's dead I i'm 99 percent sure that law sister is dead but oda has played this card before to show us that a sibling is dead but not dead yeah, especially through fire for instance sabo remember we fought sabo die by the world the world government you know the celestial dragons thought he was shot down on his boat and then you know dragon saved him so pretty much we've seen this stunt before i mean it's possible law sister technically could be alive but like i said it's so slim i highly doubt it either way and now i see why law is like he is i now understand like he is and honestly my respect level for his character just went completely up because i just did not think he would have a backstory like that especially something that dark and i like the build up intention oda's used to get to this point to finally show us law's backstory now the main question is is still on the point of is law immortal is he immortal that's the big question we still gotta wonder i know achieve it po uh, popped up last week they said that it was actually anti-aging devil fruit but it still doesn't clarify a lot of things anti-aging can mean kind of a lot of things i mean yes anti-aging means you won't age in your body and all that but i mean the anti-aging could also go towards immortality so we don't technically know how far the you know the devil fruit that law has can currently go with its immortality operation so either way still questions in the air but a damn good chapter i want to be honest this is a nine out of ten chapter it was a really damn good chapter i was blown away by the reveals of this chapter oda did a damn good job with it and I felt like the overall, the concept of the White City with the Amber Lad was just handled properly the way Oda wrote it in this chapter. Very sad. Very fucking sad. So tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Did you enjoy this chapter? Did you hate this chapter? What was your favorite moments about it? I love you all so much. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.